Namaste. Today we are going to discuss about the salient features of the idea part 2. In the part 1 video I have discussed few points of the salient features of the information technology act. As I have discussed in the earlier video, I have summarized the whole of the information technology act into just 18 points. So from which you can understand it easily. Right? So, I have completed few points in the first video as the length will extend so much. I have, have split the all those 18 points into 3 to 4 videos. For which I am going to deal with few more points in the salient features of the IDI. Right? Shall we start? Ready? So, first is the cyber contraventions. Right? So, what are the cyber contraventions? That means the IT Act is providing the liability for the people who commit the wrong, who commit the offense. So here when you take the cyber contraventions, that means these are the thing which will attract only civil liability. That means only penalty will be imposed and no punishment will be imposed in case of cyber contraventions. Right? And then the second thing is that cyber offenses. So cyber offenses are nothing but wherein penal liability gets attracted or the criminal liability gets attracted. The next thing is that cyber regulatory appellate tribunal which we will call it as CRAT. C -R -A -T. So cyber regulatory appellate tribunal is nothing but a tribunal which has been proposed to be established according to the act. But when it comes to the uh, practicality, there is no proper establishment of the cyber regulatory appellate tribunal. That means that does not exist now. That has been merged with TRI, that is Telecom Regulatory Authority of India. Uh, the IT Act clearly specifies the uh, proposal for the amendment in different acts. See, say for example, when you are talking about the offense, then what, what is the actual basic law which we are having in India with regard to offences? That is IPC. Right? Indian Penal Code. The IT Act also had specified some amendments to the IPC and also Evidence Act and also CRPC. So, when you take the Evidence Act, there will be many presumptions, right? May I presume, shall presume, conclusive presume, all these kinds of uh, presumptions are there, right? So, in case of digital crimes in case of cyber crimes the evidence that will be available will be most in most cases that will be in digital format that is electronic evidence so electronic evidence will be available then there should be some provisions in the law for the acceptance of electronic evidence also while trying the cases yes or no right so for this purpose the id act has predefinedly had specified with regard to the amendments that have to be made to the Evidence Act also. Right? And then when it comes to the CRPC, why CRPC provisions also should be amended is that when the IT Act once has been uh, completed, concluded, then if any of the cases that have to be tried due to the court of law, then there comes the question of jurisdiction. Which court will be having the power to entertain that case will be a big question. So for this purpose, even with regard to the crimes which are involved, which have been specified in the IT Act, there should be some specification whether they are cognizable offences or non-cognizable, bailable offences or non-bailable offences, compoundable or not. All these kinds of doubts will be arising unless and until if you don't make any amendments in the CRPC, that is Criminal Procedure Code. So for that purpose, the amendments in the CRPs have also been mentioned. Clear? Then, coming to the next is RBI Act. We all are directly connected with the money transfers. Right? Whether it you take NEFT, NEFT or whether it you take IMPS, any kind of money transfers that we are making now, they are being made through online. Right? Transfers will be called as Electronic Fund Transfer, EFT. So, the RBI Act amendments have been made these EFTs run more easily between the banks and between the bank and the customer. Right? 
And then coming to the next is Bankers Book Evidence Act. Bankers Book Evidence Act is a statute which provide the procedure, which provide the methods in which the banks have to maintain their own books of accounts. Books also will be in the form of online or digital format. Then if that is the case, then those books also should be given a legal stand. And here is we are having the amendments with regard to the Bankers Book Evidence Act which has been specified by the IT Act. Right? And next is NA Act. NA Act is nothing but Negotiable Instruments Act. Check includes e-check that is electronic check also. So this provision has been amended after the IT Act inclusion. I am stopping here in this video and we will continue with the other points in the third part of our topic. Right? So hope you have understood this video and these points. Thank you. Namaste.